without further ado, I think I will start introduce the director. All right, so good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Uh, today, we had the pleasure of having Director Yeo to have a little Q&A session with us right after his film, Summer Night. I'm sure everybody enjoyed the film thoroughly, and they have a lot of questions for Director. Uh, let me just say a few words about his background. Um, so, Director Yeo is a writer-director. Uh, prior to his first feature film, where, which you saw tonight, he had done six short narrative films. He lived and studied in four different countries on three different continents. His nomadic cultural and social experiences put him under a wild range of artistic and literary influences. Among his preferred subjects are useful yearnings, unfulfilled romance, and intri intricate family drama. He is an aspiring dialectician, which I would need some explanation about that word, uh, determined to fearlessly examine Meinkant, uh, irrevocable contradictions, and to question the world with its own image. He believes his art must engage the audience, evoke reflection, and invoke compassion and contemplation. Director Yu was a native from Chengdu, China, uh, in the family of college professors and blue collar workers. He arrived in the US during the Olympics in 2008, earned a bachelor degree from Texas Christian University and later a MFA in film from Emerson College. After studying and living in Fort Worth, Boston, and Austin, he moved to Los Angeles in 2015. And in 2018, the production of his first feature film brought him back to his hometown. Okay, without further ado, I present you Director Yeo. Thanks for having me. That was a that was a that, that was more than a little bit of showboating in my bio. Uh, so apologize for that. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's really well written. That uh, really led me to believe that you are not only a director, but you're also a storyteller. <laughs> Thanks for having me. It's an ab absolute pleasure of the DC Chinese Film Festival. Uh, I see that we already have a question in the question box. So um, I think by popular vote, the relationship between the grandpa and the young man is on top of a lot of people's mind. Um, sure. I think I, we just throw it out there at the first question. Sure. Um, this is a popular topic coming out of this film. And we've done a, a couple of Q&A before this one. and. Uh, sooner or later, somebody's going to bring this up anyway. So um, I, I understand how uh, a lot of audience perceive their relationship as romantic. And I think as principal, I, I shouldn't interfere on how the audience would prefer to interpret it, the characters and the stories. And I believe on principle, I should leave that to the audience. Um, all I can say is how I perceive their relationship and where did I come from with these character. Um, uh, to me, uh, their relationship is definitely, uh, um, there's a lot of affection and between the two of them uh, because the, the, the young man is sort of being handed over to grandpa to be taken care of in terms of his professional career. And from grandpa's perspective, I, I think we were mostly on grandpa's perspe perspective uh, when we were talking about their relationship. Um, in grandpa's perspective, in, I think mostly he's, he, he's, he sees himself when, when, when he was a young man. Uh, we, we talked a little bit about how the grandpa used to be a, 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 like a very physical guy that he, he teaches, PE in college. So what I'm trying to do is that we have an old man who's uh, basically in decline, both physically and uh, in terms of social influence. 
And now he sees a, 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 a young man who's just about to start his life. And, and the sentiment goes, well, I can see a little bit of myself in him. And I also, there's a little bit of jealous of his uh, vigor and, and, and youthfulness. And because of this affection, I would like to help him. And, or more, uh, I think more honestly, he would like to have some influence over him. He would like to become a sort of a father figure to the young man. And, and, and I, I, these are all psychological points. And I, I, by bringing them up, I'm not really trying to uh, tell you that this is the way to understand the characters. It's simply how, how I chose to understand their relationship and how I chose to develop their, their relationship. And it's also about power because here's a, here's a very vulnerable young guy who's basically have no clue how he's going to turn out and he's ready to be guided and directed. And grandpa has a very rare opportunity in his later stage of his life to have some influence and impact on another person. So it's also about a little bit about a, 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 a power, a, a power dynamic between the two. Very well. Uh, I can see that there is a number of questions in the question box, so there's no need for me to raise any um, anything I prepared for today. Actually, I think they ask really better questions. Uh, we'll start from the top. Um, so what makes you choose your hometown Chengdu to be the setting of this film and why in the 1990s? Uh, well, for a lot of, I mean, for a lot of first time director, they like to go back to their childhood and they like to dig up stuff from their memories. Um, I don't know what is it like for others, but for me, myself personally, I think I, 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 I dug out, I dug all these things out because these are familiar materials and mm -hmm. I have a fuller command over them and I have a fuller command over how to present them visually. And I have a, I have more confidence over how I may influence my audience with these visuals and characters. So I, I, I chose a, a autobiographical material to develop my first feature um, for, for, for this reason. Going back to the 90s, that's because that's, that's when I grew up. And it, it, on one hand, I'm trying to reconstruct what it was like in my memory, I mean, it's not necessarily reconstruct what it was really like, but it was what it was like to me, because ultimately I'm not trying to present a documentar documentarian experience for the audience. I'm trying to present a emotional experience for the audience. So I picked familiar materials and I construct uh, scenes that definitely romanticize in my memory, and hopefully, uh, if those scenarios and stories had a emotional impact on me, hopefully, I can transfer that emotional impact to the audience. So it's 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 all about emotion, and and I chose the material and the and the time period because I have more confidence over um, delivering these emotions to the audience. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm sure that's a job well done. Thanks so much. Hopefully <laughs> it is. I can tell just from even uh, based on the language, based on the words uh, the audience are using in the chat box. It's it's pretty obvious to me that everyone felt the emotional impact uh, from your film. All right. Next question. Um, so it must be a very interesting, exciting, but complicated experience working with both U.S. and Chinese crew. Would you please share a little bit of the working experience with them? Uh, sure. My um, first of all, we 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 prepared for the worst because we we knew nothing about 
what it was like to make a film in China. Both me and my producers are educating the in the states, and it was our first time back in China in many many years, and mm -hmm. we 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 had a lot of uh, uh, we were very anxious about it. We were we had a fair amount of trepidation over making a film in China. Uh, we heard a lot of horror stories, of course, um, but to be very honest, it turned out really well. Um, we had a, not a huge crew, but a small, a decent sized crew. And uh, our, uh, most of our crews are Chinese, are, are Chinese, actually, except for my DP, everybody was, was, were, were, were Chinese. They were, uh, they were extremely professional and they were extremely hardworking and they were extremely uh, respectful to, uh, to each other and to me as well, and to our uh, creative vision too. Um, it was really, I can't complain. It was really a wonderful experience. And my, my, my uh, cinematographer, uh, Sheldon, um, he's the more experienced filmmaker. He had uh, a, a few, few instances in the past. He had, he had uh, participated in a few a feature film production in the past all over the world. And it was his first time making a film in China. Uh, but uh, I think I can speak for him that he was really like pleasantly surprised by how well everything worked out. Uh, mm -hmm. Of course, there were some issues in terms of, um, I think those are in the nitty gritty, like um, the habits, right? Like the hierarchies are a little bit different. Like in China, the, the gaffer and the DP are sort of separate department heads. I know in the States, the gaffer works for DP, but in China, the gaffer and the DPs are on two different uh, branches. So, and, 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 the, and, and all the lighting crews, they only listen to the gaffer. They don't directly uh, listen to the DP. So there's a lot of uh, extra communication work going on to get everybody on the same page. And they have their certain, they have their ways in doing certain things that were not necessarily how we do our things. So it took a little bit of uh, time to get the, the two components of the crew to really work well with each other. But in, in hindsight, I, I think those issues are, are, are minimum. Um, overall, um, I don't. I didn't experience a lot of uh, difficulties uh, working with the with the Chinese crew. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, the next question is uh, somewhat related to working with uh, crews from different culture. Um, in your bio, it's mentioned that you lived in multiple countries on multiple continents. Uh, how do you find those experiences by living with different cultures and interact with them affect your film making? Um, I, I, I think in an odd way, they help me to become more focused uh, because after so many years away from home, you all you can rely on is really what you believe is the right way to do things or what you believe to be the reason to do certain things. Um, because you're, you're, you're removed and detached from, from, from everything, basically. I'm, I'm Chinese, I, but I spent the most of my past 10 years away from China. Uh, I'm, I'm sort of removed from the culture for a decent amount of time, um, which sort of simplify things for me. I could mm -hmm. just, I could just go around and telling people that, well, I don't know how things are done here, but this is how I do things, or this is how I believe things should be done, um, in in a respectful way, of course. And 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 when when differences rises uh, arises, you always try to focus on the things that you're doing instead of the person uh, mm -hmm. or, or myself. So, so the, 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 the colorful cultural experience really taught me to 
first of all, you, of course, you respect everybody. You admit that there are a lot of things you don't understand and you need to still a lot to be learned. And uh, that's on one hand. On the other hand, you, you, you have to have something certain in yourself. You have to be very certain about the, 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 the bottom line that, that that's meaningful to you. Um, and the rest is just, you know, balancing works, you know, when to, when to make certain decision. It's all about balancing these two aspects to me. I don't know if that, if that answers your questions, but that well, it is your answer. It's a very about. truthful answer. So <laughs> it is a good one. Uh, yeah. So let's turn our attention to casting. A um, lot of audiences are curious. How do you find the young actors in the film, particularly the bigger brother? Could you please share of the some of the audition stories? Uh, Sure, it, it, it may surprise you, but casting process was extremely uh, stressful because uh, I, was, I was back home earlier in 2018. Uh, we started pr the production in August of that year. So theoretically I had a lot of time, but, mm, the, pr but the production really start to get going about a month and a half before the production date. The casting process was a little was a little bit longer. I, I really relied on the casting director here in Chengdu. Uh, we we got in touch with each other early on and she read the script and of course she's experienced. She has her own contact and connection. Uh, once she started to have her own understanding of the script, she started to push people to me. Um, but to be honest, the kids, we didn't have a lot of, uh, we, we didn't have a lot of options. I, I can't tell you the story about how we casted like 500 kids. And that, that was not the case. We saw like, you know, seven or eight kids. <laughs> and that was it. I, I, I got to know the, the cousin char character. Uh, his, his name is uh, Kang Yuxiao. Uh, I got to know him earlier. Um, he he came to see me at a at a tea house with mm. uh, with his parents, and we we talked about the story and we talked about the character, and and I was just really impressed by him. And at the time, I thought he would be a good Tian Tian, so the main the main kid, um, because he's extremely smart and and curious and extremely uh, good at listening and ask good questions. He was not an experienced actor. He was just a very curious kid and he, he wants to hear you out. Um, and that to me was, was all I needed. So at, the, at first I thought he would be a good Tin Tin, but then about, I'd say two weeks or so before we started to shoot, we, I was introduced to a, a Yang Zhenxi, so the, the main kid. Uh, he was more experienced actor out of the two. He had experience acting in TV shows and commercials. Uh, so he's got a little bit of a background. Mm -hmm. um, he was completely different from uh, uh, Kang Yuxiao. He's, he's more, uh, he seems younger. They're about the same age. Uh, but he seems younger. He's more like a kid. He's 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 less mature than the other kid, um, and he's he's more of a actor with natural talent in terms of taking direction and 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 interpreting the the scenario. Mm -hmm. uh, when he when he showed up, I was like, well, I have no option because we can't have a a cousin who seems weaker and more feminine than Tintin. Ten. So I switched them mm -hmm. because the cousin seems a, a little a little bit stronger and and I'm uh, rougher on the on, on the appearance, uh, which is funny because that's not how he really is. That the, the cousin character in, in real life is quite shy and and, and soft spoken mm. and 
we when we were shooting, whenever I want him to curse, he always had just a world of difficulty with it. He couldn't curse because he yeah. just can't speak. He can't speak bad words out of his mouth. I have to really push him to <laughs> to be rough and to to curse. Uh, so that that's that gives you an idea how different they are in real life uh, than when they're in the in 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 the film. Mm -hmm. Do you imagine that in some way you might have changed the life path of these two young men? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. At least for They're only time. like that when we were rolling. As soon as we cut, they just went back to their old self. <laughs> so I don't, That's incredible I don't know. ability. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know if I did anything to their uh, life path. <laughs> I'm not then, sure about that. <laughs> I think you should not be surprised when they come back to you and say, where is my next role? <laughs> <laughs> Terrific. OK, uh, we got a lot of uh, fantastic film. Thank you, director. Really enjoy it. So I would just um, you know, condense all of those in one sentence. Um, of course, please. <laughs> Uh, so a lot is about your inspiration behind making this film, uh, creating the storyline. Uh, okay, here is a confused audience. He said, uh, a bit confused about the ending. So the grandpa is not the father of the uncle. Am I right? If so, what is their relationship? Well, if, if that's what you get, I have to apologize then. That means I, I haven't made it clear enough. They are father and son, and their family relationship goes like uh, we have grandparents, and the uncle is their older son, and Ten Ten's mom is their younger daughter, and who's you know in Japan. Uh, so yes, the uncle is the the son of uh, of grandpa. Um, I mean, they are awkward and they act like they're strangers because they are estranged. Uh, I didn't, I didn't talk about it in great length in the film, but uh, in the backstory, the the uncle was away from home for many, many years. Uh, he joined the army, um, so when he came back, he his whole person just changed, and he's estranged from his parents. And he's he 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 hold he holds a certain kind of grudges against his own parents, especially his dad, and that's why we see a a, a very strained and 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 estranged relationship between between the two men. Um, the the ending between the two of them in their room uh, was my way of resolving their um, their difficulties. I mean, it didn't get resolved, but I was trying to come up with the way that each of them is doing their best to try to approach the other, um, the other one. So it was still awkward. It was still um, difficult, but I gave the I, I gave each of them a task, which is you know this is the best you can do. Like you, you can't do any better than this. Uh, that's how I chose to uh, end their relationship in this particular uh, story. Well, there's a lot of depth to that. Um, and um, it's, again, it's really well done uh, in the way that you filmed it. Um, many of the audience are uh, impressed with the Sutran dialect so smoothly mm -hmm. blended into the film and they wonder if you will go back to Chengdu again for your next film well i'm in Chengdu right now uh, <laughs> I, I i think the dialect to me the most important thing is it renders authenticity to not necessarily the to the audience first but to the actors i mean all the actors are native speaker and and each of them has their own way of speaking the dialect. Um, uh, if 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 you know the Sichuan dialect, you can you can tell the difference. They each of them speaks slightly different tone of uh, Sichuan dialect. 
Um, but above all, it's sort of a reference point because this is a dialect you use every day. Um, so when we're performing, when, when we're acting, you can immediately spot what is wrong in your line and make change on the fly. Uh, I gave them the flexibility because I told them, well, this is written in, in Mandarin and that's not how we're going to shoot it. We're going to shoot it in Sichuanese. So it's really depend on, on you to, to find your way, uh, your own way to speak these words in, in Sichuanese. Uh, be, and because of that, pretty much every page of the screenplay were rewritten on, on the fly when we were shooting. Mm. So I, I, I write out a scene and we will rehearse and immediately we will be able to tell what is right and what is wrong and find a way to, to, to make it sound, sounding authentic. So it's, it's really a great tool to make the language part of the film. Um, that really sound like it's real uh, instead of written. Um, of course, to to the native speaker, it, it sounds funny, right? Like Sichuanese is extremely expressive and and, and a lot of the wording are, are humorous to the native speaker. Uh, that's just extra, right? Like to the majority of the audience, they don't understand the, the dialect or even the, even Chinese, but they could understand the performance. So, so that was really the, the goal uh, from the perspective of a filmmaker. Brilliant. Uh, so for, for now, let's take a step back a little bit and talk about all the directors and films that inspire you uh, to arrive <laughs> at today's style that you make for yourself. Always the toughest question. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to throw it out halfway. <laughs> uh, I, I, I think in terms of influence and, and, and inspiration, I have to go case by case, which means what were the reference for this particular project? Um, I mean, I had a few references when we when I was writing the script and they were referenced more in tone and more in, in, in the mood and subject matter. I, I remember I brought up um, um, Terence Davies' Alande's Clo Alande Closes, and I brought up uh, Edward Young's E.E. E. Um, I brought up uh, Michael Haneke's uh, right, White Ribbon and Bergman's Fenia Alexander. Um, and Spirit of Beehive, um, the Spanish film. Um, but these films are more of a reference in tone and in, in a general, uh, uh, in a general sense. When we started to get into the visual and the designing the the visual and the visual aspect of the film, uh, it was really a a, a collaborative process with my cinematographer, uh, Sheldon. Uh, he had a reference book compiled um, and the book just grew throughout the pre-production. Uh, he has his own understanding and approach to the scenes I wrote and the, the atmosphere, the tone, the lighting, the, the color uh, and how uh, how we approach uh, uh, the to, how we, how we approach the staging, so I think he 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 raised a lot of references. I now only a few that came to my mind right now. One of them is definitely uh, one car wide, um, in the mood for love, uh, and we brought up uh, Tree of Life. We both. We were both like enthusiasts of uh, Terrence Malick, <laughs> and so Tree of Life was was brought up um, very often. Uh, we brought up James Gray. Uh, again, both of us were a great admirer of James Gray, and we were particularly into his style of uh, lighting and portraying character in in very minimalistic and low light situation. Um, and there are many more that we, we talked about, um, but 
uh, these are helpful references when we were designing something that doesn't exist. Um, we of course deviated from it uh, sometimes a great deal when we were shooting it. Sometimes we we come up with shots on the fly because what we designed didn't work out. That happens a lot. Uh, um, but I think preparation really helped us to have a better understanding of what we were trying to go after. And that gives us a, more confidence to make decision on the fly when we're shooting the film. Great. It's nice to have a, a confidant during the movie shooting, right? Sheldon, I think, in a way, plays the role um, that's your sounding board. And uh, because of so much shared interest and passion. Yes. Couldn't, couldn't have done it without him, for sure. It's nice to have a soulmate like that when you're producing your first feature film. Yeah. Well, so next question, uh, we come back to the film, uh, into the film. Uh, the film is narrated in the eyes of a kid uh, or kids. Um, and it's a very different one from the view of an adult of the world. Uh, when the kid is trying to achieve his justice, it actually brings more complication for the adults. Could you please talk about the interesting collision between these two worlds, between the kids' word and the adult word? Um, it somehow reminds this audience, the film Florida Florida Project. Well, that's that's a really that's a really great question. Um, that's sort of like the the core of uh, of the film. Um, the the kids idea of right and wrong and justice and, and evil uh, the 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 greatest source of conflict in the film is this conflict between uh what's the world like to a kid and what what is the world like to the the adults and my 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 idea is that well let's see what happens to let's see what actual consequences will turn up if we approach the world like these two kids. I mean, they are fictional characters. So when they chose a course of action, um, they will encounter consequences. And in this case, some of the consequences are too much for them to, to handle. Uh, one example is that when the kid, when the when the thief were was caught, the the kid couldn't handle the violence. That was not his plan. That was that that the whole project sort of got out of the hand, and and he could only be a bystander and 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 really just ponder what ha what have I done? This is not how I thought it would turn out, or maybe that is how he thought it would turn out, but when it did really happen, when somebody was getting hurt, he couldn't process it. So I, I think this conflict was out of an, an idea that I was still seeing a lot of people acting like kids in real life, right? Like when, when, when each, of our, each of us have our own personal belief in how things should be and how things should be ran and what is right and what is wrong. Um, and the childish way to go about it is to say, well, if it's different from my my own point of view, then it's wrong. Mm -hmm. uh, if that's how you go about your life, then you're going to run into a lot of trouble and there will be consequences that you couldn't handle, just like it is the case in this film. Um, I mean, in the film, we I, I let the kids to 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 carry the perspective because well, they're kids, so it's okay for them to, to be like that. And then, and then go through a lesson and experience and change it a little bit. So, so that was, to me, that conflict was enough for me to carry on the, the narrative and the character and to, to show how adults and how kids are making very different choices when they run into complication and conflicts. Mm. At the end, when when Tian Tian stood up for himself and 
and and stop the cousin from really hurting the bully uh, it was also my message to say that uh, he's he, he he made a small step forward right now he understands i i can't just be whatever everybody else is telling to be right and wrong i i have to decide for myself what is right and wrong uh, it, my 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 cousin comes out and help me to beat up a kid that sounds right but to to him at the moment he felt wrong so he decided to 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 do to make a very drastic decision and stop his cousin and 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 risk his relationship with his cousin to to do the right thing and to me that was my way of saying look at this kid he learned to listen he he know that this is the way to go you you really figured out what you believe is right and you stand up for for that idea and 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 they will grow up and they will run into more trouble but my 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 message is that uh well you're still developing and you will still run into more complicated scenario but at least you're learning so so i'm trying to deliver a little bit more of a hopeful note at, at the end of the movie mm -hmm. uh this curious me because um i'm wondering do you expect all of this message to go directly into the hearts of the youngsters, of the kids who are watching the film? Or you expect this to be a kind of an educational message to the parents? I, I don't think my point is to educate anyone with film. Um, that's This is the wrong forum to, to educate people. I, I To me, film is about uh, delivering an emotional experience to the audience and an experience that you you may or may not had in real life um takeaways are whatever you take away from the film in terms of message and and and, and metaphor well that's your that's your business that's that's your undertaking that's not mine um i if you can take away with a positive message uh, uh good for you if you can then well maybe you know maybe next time on in the next film you 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 may uh but that's not my not that's not my goal to to deliver messages to deliver ideas my goal is to deliver a a emotional experience something recognizable yet you might not have experienced yourself in real life or something you have experienced but now you're seeing somebody else's experience as well that sort of struck up a sense of sympathy and empathy in you that's my goal so i i i think that is one of the way i approach uh, filmmaking it's not to talk about ideas and messages it's to talk about character and emotion very well um, uh, we unfortunately only have time for two more questions <laughs> and the next one is directly related to, uh, what you just said. Um, mm -hmm. there are multiple threads of storytelling and messages because everyone kind of speak about their view of the world from their own perspective. How do you manage to balance all of these in a coherent narrative? Well, that's a again a very sharp question <laughs> i i had an idea to construct a narrative in a way that sort of like a musical variation so i had a, a central emotion that i want to talk about and i then i send these characters out and have their own experience and each of them experience a version of that emotional experience then I wrap them wrap them up at the end um, to come back to the main character and the main storyline. Well, it, it was it sounded like a good plan. So, uh, so that's how I developed the, the the narrative structure to to branch out and to have uh, each of the character carry their own storyline. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, to be very honest, uh, I, I I think I could have done better. Um, a lot of the criticism I've heard is that some of the storylines are a little bit too far from the the main storyline or the main character or their uh, 
emotional narrative. And, and I agree with that. And I think I could have done better or I could have been more uh, concise with some of the some of these branches or how we talked in, in school, you know, subplots. Um, that's still something I need to uh, keep exploring and, and, and ponder um, in the future. Uh, but to this particular film, uh, the way for me to manage it is really to have different character experience different events, obviously, and to have encounters with different characters. Uh, but they're all they're all struggling over different versions of the same thing. Uh, uh, in, in in the case of, for example, in the case of uh, Grandpa, he's struggling over control, right? He's losing control of everything. He's losing control of his social relationship. He's losing control of his own body. He's he's no longer a young man. He's in decline, and and now there goes a you know a clueless eighteen year old who seems to be ready to listen to him. So he just went for it, and and then they turned out poorly because he realized that well, really I can't do anything right at this at this point because the the social life is away from me. So he retreat back to the family. What he's exercising is 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 power, right? The 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 a very specific kind of uh, masculine power, which is mm -hmm. uh, we we can find it in a lot of father figures in in our life and in films. Um, and this power topic has another variation in in the uncle, right? The way he command his own kids. The, the way he deal with his relationship with the cousin. And if you think about how he brought the, how he brought the, the dumpling back and forced him to finish it. I mean, it's very violent and it's very rough, but that, that, that was also about power, right? Like I, mm -hmm. I may, I might be a guy who's, you know, who just come out of army and have no job and have no life, but at least you have to listen to me you are my subject uh so he exercised a, a, a lot of very rough and raw power over his own sound and, and and these two topics are like i said two different versions of the same topic or or same emotional conflict um so that's my way of um managing the the sprawling <laughs> narrative hmm. oh fascinating well, I guess that all naturally lead to the last question. Uh, when you mentioned sure. you could have done better, you know, in our lives, there's always could have, should have, would have. Um, any plans for the future? What would interest you for the next topic? Um, yes, I, I, I have to say I, after uh, so many years away from home, I spent uh, almost two years now uh, in, in Chengdu, and I, I I was really like immersed in what is it like today to live in in China, and and I can tell you that there's no lack of good story materials. Mm. Uh, so many issues and topics are being argued and are being debated around me, and so many characters and emotions are. Are, are are popping up around me um so it, it it really has been a good experience coming back home and 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 experience and and my 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 next story that i'm working on uh is probably going to set in the present time and i, I i'm still intending on trying to de develop or, or explore um uh, issues in like ethical issues and moral issues in 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 you know characters in very extraordinary uh, scenario and i mean this is this time is going to probably happen to some adults now but um i'm i'm, I'm trying to focus on the 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 young the young professional working in um what we call bei shangguang so mm -hmm. uh Beijing, Shanghai, Guangzhou. I will, I'm trying to focus on this part, this group of people and how they 
um, uh, how they are handling very sharp and difficult um, moral and ethical issues mm. in their professional and personal life. Uh, uh, that 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 is all I can say about uh, what I'm working on now. Well, needless to say, we're all looking forward to see the next film. <laughs> Thanks. Yes. Thanks so much. Well, this is a truly wonderful experience um, on behalf of uh, the DC Chinese Film Festival, as well as the audience who has the pleasure of enjoying your film. We thank you for taking us on to this very emotional journey. Um, I think the key word I derived from today's Q&A is you aim to trigger the deepest emotion from human, from all the humanity. Um, so we really can't wait to see what you can present next. And I will keep trying. <laughs> <laughs> we're sure we're sure you will. Uh, well, stay safe in China, and uh, it's almost Christmas time. Yes, well. uh, I'm sure you celebrate Christmas as a returnee. So Merry Christmas to you. <laughs> Uh, and Merry Christmas. Yes, uh, we look forward to present more of your work in future DC Chinese Film Festival. Thank you so much. You've been very kind. And I'd like to thank all the audience as well. It's it's a very special venue and to, to participate in a film festival online. And and it means a lot to me to to present this film in, in, in the States for the first time. So uh, it's truly an honor and a pleasure. Uh, so thanks again. Thank you. So with that, we will wrap up this Q&A. All right. Good night, everybody. Good